Hello and welcome to Alexpo and today we're talking about Antonio Conte. The Italian got the Tottenham job the other week, replacing Nuno after a terrible start of the season for Spurs. But in a different world, could Antonio Conte have been the Man United manager? They've just sacked Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and are looking for a man to take the Red Devils to the heights that they've been nowhere near under Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. A while back they were linked with the move for Conte but they're stuck by Solskjaer and in that time Tottenham have swooped in and got the Italian. But what would happen if Antonio Conte managed this Man United team? We're losing Football Manager 2022, I'm going to make it happen. Let's dive into this simulation and see just what happens when Antonio Conte gets the job at Old Trafford. Right here we are at the start of the simulation and as you can see Antonio Conte has left Tottenham after barely any time at all and he's the new Man United manager. He signed a three year deal at Old Trafford and he's earning a huge £275,000 a week. Antonio Conte, one of the top managers in world football, but can he get this Man United team playing some decent football, maybe he's winning some trophies, maybe he's even a Premier League title. They haven't came close to a Premier League title since the Sir Alex Ferguson days. Can Antonio Conte, a serial winner, a former Premier League winner, can he be the man to restore glory to the Red Devils? I'm going to simulate a year into the future. Let's find out how Antonio Conte gets on in his first year as Man United manager. Right here we are a year into the future and incredibly Man United have won the Premier League. Antonio Conte has done it after just one year at Old Trafford. He has taken Man United to the Premier League title. It's their first title since 2013, the final season of Sir Alex Ferguson. And nine years later, they are top of the pile. They finished three points ahead of Manchester City. Man United got 80 and you got City on 77, Liverpool 75 and Leicester 71. So it was quite a close title race. The title was already wrapped up on the final day. Man City beat West Ham 3-2. Meanwhile, the champions could only draw, but it didn't matter because the title was already won. Cristiano Ronaldo getting himself the golden boot with 21 goals, and Bruno Fernandes getting 14 assists, more than anyone else in the entire Premier League. It's been quite a surprising season here, actually. Everton finished in the top six, Chelsea down in seventh, West Ham eighth, Newcastle ninth, Arsenal down in tenth. Before we go any further, I want to quickly say who Tottenham got to replace Antonio Conte because it was a little bit harsh on them for them to lose the manager. They got Marcelo Bielsa, they came fifth. Pretty good, to be honest with you. But let's focus on Man United, our 2022 Premier League champions. They only lost six games all season, 24 wins. Let's have a little look at a bit more detail. They've kept Harry Maguire as the captain and Bruno Fernandes the vice captain. Have they won anything else? Let's have a little look. Antonio Conte is already favoured personnel, which is quite incredible. It speaks volumes about how big a deal winning the title is here. I mean, I don't think... It, it's a, that's huge to win the title. They got off to a great start. They beat Brighton 3-0. Then they beat Spurs 5-0 away from home. There was a little bit of a dip in the road, beaten 2-0 by Liverpool late on at Old Trafford. But they've recovered to be Premier League champions. How have they gone elsewhere? They were beaten in the Carabao Cup fourth round by Burnley. That's pretty disappointing. FA Cup, how far have they gone? The quarter final where they lost to Liverpool in extra time. And in the Champions League, they made it to the knockout stages where they were beaten by Juventus 4 1 on aggregate. But it gave them a clean run at the title. After that Champions League defeat, they only lost one Premier League game, a 3 0 defeat to West Ham. They beat Everton, they beat Newcastle, they beat Manchester City and they've gone on to become Premier League champions. Let's check the players out, let's see who's been playing where, who's been playing well. I assume they've been using the 3-5-2 system that Antonio Conte just loves and they have. Right wing back, left wing back. Luke Shaw's been the left wing back. How's he got on in that position? 5 assists, average rating 6.94. It's not amazing but it's okay. Right wing back, Diogo Dallos played 22, he's got 22 starts, 15 sub-appearances. What about Juan Bissaka, 19 starts, 14 sub-appearances. Those two look like they've rotated. Neither have been brilliant to be honest with you. Juan Bissaka's on the transfer list. So I'd imagine that Antonio Conte will be looking for a new right wing back in this transfer window. 
Obviously, they've played a front two. At the end of the season, it was Rashford and Greenwood, but obviously it'll have been Ronaldo up front. In all competitions, Ronaldo got 29 goals. Cavani getting 16 and Rashford getting 15. The best player was Cristiano Ronaldo, 7.49, well clear of anyone else. Fernandes and Varane there getting 7.22. De Gea, really good, 7.2. Rashford's had a great season. Cavani's had a great season. Lindelof, pretty solid. Scott McTominay's done well. And so has Paul Pogba and Harry Maguire. They actually did bring in a right wing back. I've missed that one. They got Danilo, previously of Manchester City. I'm surprised he's only 30, actually. Made 13 Premier League appearances, two assists. He's been pretty good. A little stopgap for Antonio Conte. How's Donny van der Beek done? Not very well. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Here's the big surprise. Jadon Sancho. One substitute appearance all season. Has he been injured? Let's have a little look. Nah. He just hasn't been picked at all by Antonio Conte. That is an incredible shock. Let's check the transfers out, see if he's made any additions. Obviously, we know he got Danilo. And that's basically it. Has he got rid of anyone? Jesse Lingard was loaned out. Matter was loaned out. They sold Anthony Martial. And again, that's about it. But Man United, after a year of having Antonio Conte as manager, are Premier League champions. This could be the start of a long and fruitful reign as Manchester United manager. Can things get better in Season 2? Can they get better? I mean, Christ, could they win a Champions League? Let's simulate at the end of Season 2. Let's see how the second year of Antonio Conte gets on at Man United. Right, here we are at the end of Season 2 and Antonio Conte has been replaced. After winning the title, Antonio Conte has been sacked and replaced by another high-profile Italian, Max Allegri, who is Gabriel Milano here, but it is Max Allegri. He is the new Man United manager replacing Antonio Conte. Conte got the sack on the 15th of October 2022 after one year and 81 days as manager. That's barely no time at all since he lifted the title. It's less than five months between winning the title and being sacked. That is absolutely astonishing. I, I can't quite believe that's happened. I mean, how bad were things for Antonio Conte at uh, Man United in Season 2 that they decided to sack the man who won them their first title since 2013? Let's see where they were when Antonio Conte got the sack. Here we are at the end of the season. Liverpool are the Premier League champions. Man United have finished fourth, only five points shy of where they were when they won the title last season, but this time only good enough to finish fourth. Christ, to be fair to them, things were not going well. They've dropped like a stone. They start the season with a win to Brighton. They climbed as high as third. Then they lost to Reading. They lost to Spurs. They lost to Man City. They lost to Chelsea. Then on the 22nd of October, they lost 3-2 to Newcastle, leaving Man United 14th in the Premier League. And that was enough for Conte to get the sack. They did recover, they got up to 4th in February and they never looked back. A picture of consistency there, just staying 4th for the rest of the season. But surely this is a shocking decision. It's so, so harsh on Antonio Conte. I want to have a look, see if he made any signings. They got Yuri Tielemans in from Leicester. And they also got Wilfred and Didi from Leicester. They're the two main names there for me. Gonzalo Inacio from Sporting, a Portuguese centre-back. He arrived hasn't been great to be honest with you did he get rid of anyone let's have a little look they loaned out Juan Bissaka they sold Pereira they got rid of Phil Jones I just can't believe Antonio Conte has been sacked after all this the man won the piss and title for goodness sake Jadon Sancho's back in the fold but Donny van der Beek still can't get a game and neither can Fred which is a little bit disappointing for him but after all this winning the title in his first season. And they sacked him. They sacked him so quickly. How were things going in the Champions League? Perhaps that's been a bit of a blow as well. They lost the Community Shield at Man City. But I mean that doesn't largely matter. League Cup. They were. They were going okay. They were going alright. They were still in it. When he got the sack. Champions League. Things weren't going appallingly. They beat Bayer Leverkusen there. Then they beat Atletico. They beat Monaco. 
So nine points from the first three games. Then they lost to Monaco away. They drew with Bayer Leverkusen. And that draw with Bayer Leverkusen was the first game after Conte was sacked. Did the end of the season with any trophies? They lost the Champions League final. You know what? Good. Because they don't deserve it. The way they've treated Antonio Conte, they don't deserve it. What would have happened if Antonio Conte got the Man United job? He would have delivered them the title within 12 months. But by the October, he would have been sacked. A crazy, crazy football manager simulation. But we will leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexpo. And until next time, we will see you around.